Hello everyone, uh, welcome to the lecture session on uh, elements of uh, mechanical engineering. I am Anir Kumar MM, I am working as assistant professor, department of mechanical engineering, Maharaja Institute of Technology, Mysore. Uh, in the previous session, uh, we had discussed uh, the different types of welding processes like uh, electric arc welding and uh, tungsten inert gas welding process. But in this session, we are going to know the working principle of uh, the metal inert gas welding process and uh, the other gas welding processes. Okay, uh, the metal inert uh, gas welding process it is popularly known as that is MIG welding. Okay, and this is the block diagram of the metal inert gas welding process or MIG welding process. In the metal inert gas welding process. Uh, it is a, one of the type of uh, arc welding process. In this type of arc welding, arc welding process, the two metal pieces which are going to be joined by the heat that is generated by an electric arc. That electric arc that will be struck between the uh, consumable uncoated electrode and the workpiece material in the presence of inert gas atmosphere and also uh, here the electrode is act as a filler material that will fill the gap between the two metal pieces and it forms the joint okay that is the principle of the metal inert gas welding process in this process the electric arc is the struck between the consumable uncoated electrode here we are using the uh, consumable electrode and it is uncoated the flux is not coating on on the surface of that electrode okay it is a plain electrode is used in the uh, tungsten uh, metal inert gas welding process okay here the uncoated consumable electrode uh, is used so the electric arc is struck between the uh, uncoated consumable electrode and then the workpiece material in the presence of inert gases and here the electrode is act as a filler material that will fill the gap between the two metal pieces and upon cooling we will get the strong solid joint okay that is the principle of the metal inert gas welding process uh, this uh, process is consists of the welding torch okay this is the welding torch okay and the uh, coat, uh, uncoated uh, uh, wire electrode will be rigidly fixed in the electrode holder okay this is electrode holder or you can say that it is a uh, welding torch and the wire electrode is fixed into the welding torch okay the diameter of the wire electrode is around uh, uh, 0.72 the diameter of the wire electrode is 0.7 to 2.4 mm that is a diameter that will be varies okay and then this uh, wire electrode is continuously feed at the constant rate so uh, at the rate with the help of the feed roller okay so with the help of this feed roller so continuously we can feed the electrode to the welding area this electrode is continuously consumed and it forms the weld okay and uh, uh, the inert gases the inert gases will be supplied into the welding pool okay the commonly used inert gases are helium or organ gas will be used in this process we are not using any flux so instead of that we are supplying the inert gases that inert gases it forms the gaseous shield and protect the molten metal from the atmosphere or from the oxygen okay and then ac or dc power source will be supplied okay that is the uh, components used in the uh, metal inert gas welding coming to the working initially i had to take the two metal pieces which are going to be joined okay i have to take the two metal pieces and clean the edges whatever the dust particles will be there that will be removed and grease or any oxides will be present on the surface that will be removed first and then positioned with the suitable ga gap okay that is the first step initially you have to take the two metal pieces and clean it and remove the dust particles and positioned it, uh, positioned it with the suitable gap okay and then you have to turn on the power source as well as the cylinder okay so here uh, the separate inert gas cylinder will be there so this will be carrying the inert gases okay that will be connected to the welding torch okay at the tip of the welding torch it looks like a nozzle through that nozzle the inert gases will be passing to the welding pool area okay and then uh, the uh, the electrode is connected to the negative terminal of the power source and then the workpiece is connected to the positive terminal of the power source okay when you turn on the power source as well as the cylinder in that cylinder the pressure regulator will be provided to control the flow rate of the inert gases the regulator will be provided when you turn on the power source as well as the cylinder so the current will be flowing through the electrode and the workpiece material initially you have to brought the electrode closer to the workpiece surfaces and touch it and then momentarily separated by a small gap that gap is around uh, 1.5 to 
3 mm. So that gap will be maintained between the electrode and the workpiece material. At that time, the electric arc will be stabilized. So the electric arc will be stuck between the gap of the electrode and then the workpiece material. This arc temperature will be very high. So due to high temperature, that temperature is around uh, 4000 degree centigrade. Due to high temperature, it melts the edges of the metal pieces. At the same time, the consumable electrode, this electrode is also melted. This molten electrode is combined with the molten workpiece material. So this, due to high temperature, the electrode is consumed or it is melted. At the same time, the edges of the two metal pieces also melted. This molten uh, metal is combined with the molten electrode and allow for, and allow for cooling, we will get the strong solid joint. At the same time, we are supplying the inert gases. This inert gases is react with the molten material and it forms the gaseous shield. Oh, so it protect the molten metal from the atmosphere. If you're not using inert gases, means this molten metal it will absorb the oxygen from the atmosphere and it forms the oxide. So once it oxide is formed means so the blow holes are porous it will be created then the joint strength will be weak. To prevent that or to avoid that the inert gases will be supplied from the cylinder into the welding pool area. This inert gases it forms the gaseous shield and protect the molten metal from the atmosphere. So this is the working principle of the metal inert gas welding process. Okay, In this process initially we had to take the two metal pieces and cleaned it and positioned it with the suitable gap okay and then the electrode is rigidly fixed into the welding torch and this one uh, and this welding torch is connected to the negative terminal of the power source and the workpiece is connected to the positive terminal of the power source and then the small opening will be provided into the welding torch that will be connected to the inert gas cylinder and this inert gas cylinder will carrying the inert gases like helium or argon Okay, uh, first you have to switch on the power source or turn on the power source as well as the inert gas cylinder. The gas will be supplied through the welding torch into the welding area. Okay, so when the current is flowing through the electrode and the workpiece material, initially you have to charge the electrode to the workpiece surfaces and separate it by a small gap. At that time, the electric arc will be struck in between the gap of the workpiece material and to the electrode. Okay, and this arc temperature will be very high. Due to high temperature, it melts the edges of the metal pieces as well as it melts the edges of the uh, consumable, uh, consumable electrode. So this molten electrode is combined with the molten workpiece material and upon cooling we will get the strong solid joint. Okay, So that is the working principle of the metal inert gas welding process or MIG welding process. Uh, coming to the advantages, the MIG welding process it is a, a fast and economical process and here we are not using any flux okay so there is no slack formation and clean welding joint will be takes place in the metal inert gas welding process and uh, uh, the process can be automated and uh, the, the this uh, 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 metal inert gas welding process is suitable for thin and thick work pieces can be welded okay these are the advantages uh, and uh, the weld depositor rate uh, is very high okay these are the advantages coming to the disadvantages the equipment is very costlier okay and dross and porosity is the prevalent uh, most prevalent uh, uh, quality problem in this process okay these are the uh, disadvantages of uh, mig welding process and coming to the applications uh, this uh, type of welding is widely used in uh, automobile industries aircraft industries and uh, sheet metal industries ship building industries okay uh, coming to the difference, uh, what is the difference between uh, TIG and MIG welding process means uh, in the TIG welding process uh, the non-consumable electrode will be used but in the MIG welding process the consumable electrode is used okay and uh, in the TIG welding process uh, the electrode uh, is not melted only stabilize the electric arc okay here the electrode is melted and fills the gap between the um, two metal pieces. Uh, in the TIG uh, welding uh, process, the separate filler material will be added to fill the gap between the metal pieces. But in the MIG welding process, the electrode is act as a filler material that will uh, melts and fills the gap between the two metal pieces. And the, coming to the cost, the TIG welding process is less cost 
um, and MIG welding process equipment will be costlier and the TIG welding process is suitable for um, uh, welding the thin plates less than 4 mm material can be welded but MIG, MIG welding process is suitable for thin and thick work pieces can be welded more th uh, greater than uh, 4, 4 mm can be welded okay these are the uh, difference between the tungsten inert gas welding process and the metal inert gas welding process okay uh, next we will discuss the electrodes okay what do you mean by electrode electrode is nothing but it is the metallic rod used in the arc welding process okay it is a metallic rod used in the arc welding process that is called as electrode electrode it act as a filler material and it is a metallic rod it is made up of same as the base metal okay uh, or the same chemical composition of the base metal okay that is called as the electrode electrode is nothing but it is a metallic rod or it is a filler material used to fill the gap between the two metal pieces okay and also it will stabilize the electric arc in the arc welding process okay that will stabilize an electric arc and also it act as the filler material that fills the gap between the two metal pieces this electrode is, is classified into two types one is consumable electrode and another one is a non consumable electrode what do you mean by consumable electrode the electrode is consumed during the welding uh, during the welding process that is called as consumable electrode it is consumed means it is melted uh, during the welding process okay so that is the consumable electrode it is made up of same as the base metal or same chemical composition of the base metal okay that is the consumable electrode okay and this consumable uh, electrode is further classified into two types one is plain electrode and another one is the coated electrode the plain electrode uh, it is the, the metallic rod is it is plain it is there is no coating on the surface of the uh, metallic rod that is called as plain electrode it is not coating only uh, uh, so in the uh, MIG welding process we are using the plain electrode the plain electrode will be used in the MIG welding process okay there is no coating on the on the metallic rod okay it is plain okay it is made up of same as the base metal or same chemical composition of the base metal okay that is the plain electrode okay this plain electrode is used in the MIG welding process next is the coated electrode the, uh, the metallic rod is coated with the flux material that is the coated electrode okay this is the uh, coated electrode the flux is coating on the surface of the metallic rod okay that is the coated electrode this coated electrode is used in electric arc welding process okay the flux is coating on the surface of the metallic rod that is called as coated electrode okay next non consumable electrode uh, non consumable electrode is nothing but it is, the electrode is not consumed during the welding process that is called non consumable electrode okay it stabilizes only the electric arc okay it is not consumed okay this electrode is made up of either graphite or the tungsten or carbides okay and uh, this uh, non consumable electrode is used in uh, tungsten inert gas welding process and atomic hydrogen welding process okay so electrode is nothing but it is the metallic rod used in the arc welding process this metallic rod is made up of same as the base metal or the same chemical composition of the base metal and this electrode is classified into two types one is consumable and non consumable the consumable electrode is it is consumed during the welding process it is melted during the welding process okay so there are two types of consumable electrodes are available one is a plain and then the coated plain electrode it is plain there is no coating is provided on the metallic rod so that type of electrode you can call it as a plain electrode coated electrode means the flux is coated on the surface of the metallic rod you can call it as a flux coated electrode or coated electrode okay and next type of is non consumable electrode it is not consumed during the welding okay only stabilize an electric arc that type of electrode you can call it as non consumable electrode okay in that uh, non consumable electrode it is made up of tungsten or graphite okay and this type of uh, electrode is used in uh, tungsten inert gas welding process and plain electrode it is used in uh, mig welding process and coated electrode it is used in electric arc welding process okay next uh, we will discuss the uh, working of the gas welding oxyacetylene gas welding process okay uh, next uh, we will discuss uh, next type of welding process that is uh, gas welding process in the gas welding process uh, the heat source is used as a gas flame, uh, gas flame. Uh, till now we have discussed the electric arc is used as the uh, heat source for the arc welding process then electric arc will be used for heating the edges of the two metal pieces but in the gas welding process the gas flame is used as a heat source that 
gas flame it melts the edges of the two metal pieces and upon cooling we will get the strong solid joint in the gas welding process the two metal pieces can be heated with the help of the gas flame that gas flame is produced by the combustion of the fuel gases and then the oxygen the commonly used fuel gases are it may be acetylene or hydrogen or propane and butane okay these are the gases is used as the fuel gas that is along with that oxygen we can produce the flame that flame temperature will be very high that is around 3200 degree centigrade due to high temperature it melt the melt the edges of the two metal pieces and upon cooling we will get the strong solid joint but the most commonly used uh, the gas source for producing the flame is there is oxygen and acetylene acetylene uh, the is used as the fuel gas that acetylene is uh, burn with oxygen and it produces the gas flame and that flame temperature is around 3000 to 3500 degree centigrade that temperature is sufficient to melt the edges of the two metal pieces so that flame can be used for the welding process uh, next we will discuss the oxy uh, working principle of the oxy acetylene welding process okay this one is the block diagram for the oxy acetylene gas welding the A suitable proportion of oxygen and acetylene gas will be supplied into the welding torch in that welding torch both the gases will be mix up well and then it supplied through the torch tip at that time the flame if you ignite it at that time the flame will be produced that flame we can call it as oxy acetylene flame with the help of that oxy acetylene flame we can do the welding that is called as oxy acetylene welding okay with the help of the oxy acetylene flame we can pro, uh, do the welding that type of welding we can call it as oxy acetylene welding process okay coming to the working this oxy acetylene welding process it consists of the two cylinders two large cylinders one cylinder is containing the oxygen gas and another cylinder is containing the acetylene gas okay these two are the large cylinders one cylinder is containing oxygen gas and another cylinder is containing the fuel fuel gas that is called acetylene and uh, the two separate uh, the regulators pressure regulators will be provided to control the flow rate of the oxygen and to uh, in the oxygen cylinder and then the acetylene cylinder okay this is the one pressure regulator and this is another pressure regulator okay the two separate the pressure regulator will be provided to the uh, oxygen cylinder and then the acetylene cylinder and these two cylinders will be connected to the welding torch with the help of the hose hose is nothing but there is a pipe it connects the uh, cylinder and to the torch okay so the two separate hose will be provided it connects the oxygen cylinder to the welding torch and this hose will connect the uh, acetylene cylinder to the welding torch okay in that welding torch it attacks the mixing chamber here both the gases oxygen gas and acetylene gas will be mix up well and it supplied through the welding torch and here you have to ignite it at that time that flame will be produced you have to brought the flame closer to the workpiece surfaces and this flame temperature will be very high due to high, high temperature the workpiece will be melted okay coming to the working initially you have to take the two metal pieces which we are going to be welded okay you have to take the two metal pieces clean it remove the dust particles oil or grease whatever it present on the surface just you have to remove it and then position it with a suitable gap okay that is the first step initially you have to take this is the work piece one and this is the work piece two initially you have to take the two metal pieces and clean it and position it with a suitable gap next the it consists of the two large cylinders one cylinder is containing the oxygen gas and another cylinder is containing the acetylene gas i had to supply the oxygen acetylene gas with the suitable proportion and supplied into the welding torch okay in that welding torch the oxygen gas and then the acetylene gas will be mix up well okay it, it is also called as the mixing chamber here the oxygen gas and acetylene gas will be mix up well and supplied through the tip of the torch okay and then here i have to ignite it the flame will be ignited that time the oxy acetylene gas flame will be produced so this flame temperature is very high it is around 3000 to 3600 degree centigrade so just you have to brought the oxy acetylene gas flame closer to the workpiece surfaces at that time due to high temperature it melts the edges of the two metal pieces at the same time you have to add the manually by the filler material filler material is nothing but it is a 
material added to fill the gap between the two metal pieces nothing nothing but it is the additional material is added to fill the gap between the two metal pieces you have to add manually by the filler material this filler material is also melted because of high temperature of the gas flame this filler material is also melted and the edges of the two metal pieces is also melted this molten filler material is combined with the molten workpiece material upon cooling we will get the strong solid joint okay that is the working of oxyacetylene gas welding process in this process we are using the heat source is a gas flame thus gas flame is produced when you supply the suitable proportion of oxygen and acetylene gas will be supplied into the welding torch at that time the flame will be produced that flame we can call it as oxyacetylene flame with the help of that oxyacetylene flame we can uh, do the welding that is called oxyacetylene welding process okay and the commonly used the fuel gases in the gas welding process is either you can use oxygen gas or acetylene gas or you can use hydrogen or you can use uh, butane or propane but the most commonly and widely used the fuel gases in the gas welding process is acetylene gas okay uh, coming to the uh, let us discuss uh, one so uh, the working of oxidation gas uh, welding process is so it consists of the two cylinders one cylinder is containing oxygen gas and another cylinder containing the acetylene gas and the two separate the pressure regulator will be provided to control the flow rate of the gases okay uh, and these uh, cylinders will be connected to the welding torch through the hose okay uh, when you supply the oxygen acetylene gas into the into the welding torch through the hose and here the both the gases will be mix up well and then supplied through the welding torch uh, tip of the torch at that time you have to ignite it uh, so the flame will be produced so that flame you can call it as the oxyacetylene gas flame and that flame is brought closer to the workpiece surfaces so this flame temperature will be very high due to high temperature the edges of the two metal pieces get melted at the same time manually we have to add the filler material this filler material is also melted this molten filler material is combined with the molten workpiece material and upon cooling we will get the strong solid joint okay that is the work of the oxyacetylene gas welding process okay next coming to the advantages uh, this uh, oxyacetylene gas welding process it is simple and it is uh, inexpensive process okay and this uh, process will be eliminate the skilled operators so okay no need for skilled workers to do the welding and the temperature of the gas flame the temperature of the gas flame can be uh, controlled easily depending upon the thickness of the workpiece material and uh, type of the material which we are going to be made based on that we can control the temperature of the uh, gas flame okay these are the advantages coming to the disadvantages uh, acetylene gas is costlier okay and then uh, uh, precaution should be taken because high acetylene gas is highly explosive so care should be taken while handling uh, and storing the acetylene gas and during the welding process next uh, and this is not suitable for thick and high melting point alloys okay it is suitable for thin workpiece material so thin workpiece material can be easily welded and it is this process is not suitable for welding a uh, thick workpiece material and high melting point material another type of uh, disadvantages is uh, the refractory materials like tungsten molybdenum and uh, uh, reactive materials like thorium uh, this is difficult to do the gas welding okay these are the disadvantages of the gas welding process uh, next uh, we will uh, move on to the types of flame are produced in the oxyacetylene gas welding process uh, before coming seeing the gas welding process the operator should know the characteristics of the flame which are produced in the uh, uh, oxyacetylene gas welding process so there are three types of flame will be produced in the uh, uh, ga uh, oxyacetylene gas welding process those three types of uh, flames are one is the neutral flame another one is the oxidizing flame another one is the reducing flame okay uh, neutral flame uh, the neutral flame is produced when the equal volume of oxygen and acetylene gas will be supplied into the welding torch so 
the equal quantity or equal volume of oxygen and acetylene gas will be supplied into the welding torch at that time the neutral flame will be produced so it is around 1 is to 1 percent 1 percent of oxygen and 1 percent of acetylene gas will be supplied into the welding torch at that time the neutral flame will be produced okay so neutral flame it consists of the outer blue flame envelope and the inner white cone will be formed okay this neutral flame is looks like a inner white cone flame that will be enveloped by the outer blue, uh, blue flame okay the temperature will be very high it is around 3000 degree centigrade and due to high temperature there is no changes in the uh, chemical action of the base metal because the equal volume of oxygen and acetylene will be supplied into the uh, uh, welding torch so there is no changes in the uh, base metal okay because of the temperature due to high temperature the edges of the two metal pieces will be melted but there is no chemical changes in the base metal okay and this type of flame is used in the welding of cast iron steel aluminium copper those materials can be welded and the neutral flame is the most commonly and widely used flame for the welding process okay most commonly and widely used flame for the uh, welding process and it is a suitable for the welding okay neutral flame is nothing but the equal volume of oxygen and acetylene gas will be supplied into the welding torch at that time the resulting flame is the neutral flame neutral flame it looks like a the inner white cone and is covered by the envelope by the uh, blue outer blue flame okay next is the oxidizing flame Oxidizing flame is nothing but the excess of oxygen and less acetylene gas will be supplied into the welding torch. Okay, if you are increasing the uh, oxygen and uh, for reducing the uh, acetylene, that means the 1% uh, 1.5 is to 1 1.5% oxygen gas and 1% acetylene gas will be supplied into the welding torch so that time the resulting flame is the oxidizing flame okay this oxidizing flame it looks like a neutral flame but the inner cone is somewhat shorter it's just like a smaller the inner cone will be smaller and that will cover by the outer cone flame okay and uh, increasing the oxygen content this oxygen it will be react with the base metal and it forms the oxides so this type of flame it is not suitable for the welding and it is suitable for the cutting process because of the excess oxygen that will be react with the molten metal and it forms the oxides so if you form the oxides means the joint strength will be weak okay that type of flame you can call it as the oxidizing flame oxidizing flame will be formed when you increasing the oxygen content okay so increasing the excess of oxygen and less acetylene gas will be supplied into the welding torch at that time the oxidizing flame will be formed this oxidizing flame is not suitable for the welding but it is suitable for the cutting process and the due, due to increasing the oxygen content the temperature will be increased the temperature is around 1600 degree centigrade so due to high temperature uh, this type of flame is used for the cutting process next is the reducing flame in that reducing flame is formed when less oxygen and uh, more acetylene gas will be supplied into the welding torch at that time uh, the reducing flame will be formed okay so reducing flame is nothing but the less uh, oxygen and more acetylene gas will be supplied into the welding torch so the resulting flame is the reducing flame uh, okay in the reducing flame the it consists of the inner cone and it is surrounded by the outer blue flame in between that one intermediate acetylene feather will be formed or intermediate cone will be formed that is called intermediate acetylene feather okay and this type of flame is used for uh, uh, welding non-ferrous materials because non-ferrous materials melting temperature will be very less so for the, uh, for welding the non-ferrous materials the reducing flame is used okay and uh, these are the three different types of flame will be formed in the uh, gas welding process okay one is uh, the neutral flame and one is oxidizing flame and the one is the reducing flame neutral flame uh, equal volume of oxygen and acetylene gas will be supplied into the welding torch that means one percent oxygen and one percent acetylene gas will be supplied into the welding torch at that time the neutral flame will be used uh, form and this neutral flame is uh, most commonly used flying used for the welding process and this flame is consists of uh, the outer blue flame envelope and then the inner white cone will be formed okay in this type of flame they, they are used for welding there is no changes in the uh, 
there is no chemical changes in the uh, base metal okay uh, and this type of flame is used for welding of ferrous and non ferrous materials like cast iron copper aluminum or uh, steel that can be welded by using the neutral flame oxidizing flame by increasing the oxygen and uh, and less acetylene gas will be supplied into the welding towards that time the oxidizing flame will be formed so that means 1.5% oxygen and 1% acetylene gas will be supplied into the welding torch the, the torch the resulting flame is the oxidizing flame this oxidizing flame it looks like a, a neutral flame but the inner cone is somewhat shorter okay compared to the uh, neutral flame the here the inner cone will be somewhat uh, longer but here the inner cone will be shorter and it is covered by the outer cone flame okay and this type of flame is used uh, it is used suitable for cutting not for welding process because of excess oxygen it react with the molten metal and it forms oxides so uh, this type of flame is not suitable for the welding process so instead of that they are using for the cutting the material next reducing flame the reducing flame is a uh, form of when we are increasing our excess of acetylene and less oxygen gas will be supplied into the welding torch that means 1 is to 1.5 1% oxygen gas and 1.5% acetylene gas will be supplied into the welding torch at that time the reducing flame will be formed okay this reducing flame is used for uh, welding the non ferrous materials and it consists of the outer cone blue flame and uh, a inner cone in between that one intermediate cone will be formed so that intermediate cone you can call it as intermediate acetylene feather okay these are the three different types of flames will be formed in the oxyacetylene gas welding process okay so gas welding is nothing but the uh, gas flame is used for heating the edges of the two metal pieces so with the help of that uh, gas flame you can heat the edges of the two metal pieces upon cooling we will get the strong solution here we are using the the uh, gas flame is used as a heat source for heating the edges of the two metal pieces but in the arc welding process the electric arc is used as a heat source with the help of the electric arc we can heat the edges of the two metal pieces or you can heat the uh, work piece we are going to be welded okay um, i hope all of you understood uh, the electric arc welding tig welding process mig welding process and then the gas welding process okay uh, this completes the welding process in the next session we are going to discuss the uh, another type of joining process like uh, soldering and then the brazing thank you